Dear colleagues, thank you very much for inviting me for the lecture. And I'll try to show you the critical Im impact factors of the modern biobanking in one hand and the impact of the success on the regional uh, development in other hand. So uh, being honest, if we are speaking that we are doing biobanking, those who are in the clinic or those who are in the lab think that we are doing something like this in this picture where they think that we just grow samples and grow data uh, but uh, biobanking in the reality is a hard job as we all know so um, i'm going to speak about these contents so why we need the biobanks how to do it and how increase the relevance uh, of it and the direct uh, impact uh, with the success factors. So we all know and we have all have seen these uh, publications on uh, as biological resource centers from OECD or from the Time magazine that we are changing the world. Funny thing, and what I want to say about is that we haven't changed the world yet Unfortunately, as the COVID pandemic has shown, we really, uh, really need to uh, have biobanks to be fast, to be as uh, mobile as possible and as flexible as possible. So we have seen that the Moderna that developed the best biobank uh, in the COVID has also developed the best uh, vaccine. So in, if we compare with uh, uh, Spain uh, grip, we can, uh, Spain influenza, we can just understand that having the samples was the key to develop as fast as possible a vaccine to end the pandemic, hopefully. What, why actually we are there not only for um, the development of drugs or for impact factors of uh, several researchers that use, but we are there also to help to uh, make uh, public health possible as fast and as flexible as possible. In other hand, there are also some uh, very interesting um, uh, publications about the cancer and how a biobank can change the cancer research as we have actually very fast done with the COVID. But in comparison to COVID, cancer is more complex. So that's why we haven't changed yet uh, big things. Maybe because we haven't not uh, decided on adequate resources or we haven't allocated enough or appropriate resources uh, effectively or maybe the cancer is very complex and we the working models are inaccurate if you are interested why we are yet not in the cancer research far you can look to this um, link actually everything that i haven't done myself there are links there that you can see about and if we uh dive deep in this idea of not only cancer, but for instance, also for diabetes, uh, we can understand with the 2010 published uh, actually workflow of how the innovation in, 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 in the medicine is functioning in biomarker research and in, in biomedicine. And if we start from the target to the phase three, where something is already after that implemented in the routine, we can see that we almost in each level need biobanks. We need tissue, we need um, the plasma, we need serum we need actually um, prove that we are on the right way uh, checking all the time on biospecimens and on the data that we have but actually it is not only like this as in the word biobanks there is a word bank in it everybody thinks that we have 
uh, incredible amount of money everybody every everyone from us so the funny thing there are more investigations on the how biobanking market is developing on money than how good biobanking is functioning it is really tragic if you google the biobanking market you will get for sure more global investigations is as bio biobanking development because in the development we are writing each about own uh, biobank and we are writing about how we great we are great and others don't understand but if it is coming to the market the other people are doing these investigations and then we are getting 53 billion dollar will be in 2027 the, the market funny thing is was done in 2017 after corona i think this this will be double so high so uh, we have also a huge deviation between the clinical biobanking and the biomarker research and the real research which is happening actually uh, so by baseline research let's say which is happening in the laboratory we have this um, complex of not communicating uh, in, and the biobanks are actually in the middle needing the from the doctors to deliver the data and the samples and needing from the researchers in lab to understand that if they develop something it should be once come back to the doctor who can use it so it is better to hear to the doctor what they are they need their needs are in the curing and in the managing of a um, disease this dialogue is facilitated usually by a biobank and i have seen this kind of facilitations in several situations in graz in in cyprus in san diego for instance uh, actually in Russia in several cases and in, in Germany but uh, you know if I can uh, count this in, in several cases then we are still not doing it in a uh, you know bright band manner we are not doing it it's really in a co um, correct uh, type um, about the European biobanking and research infrastructure actually uh, I think that Lukas can speak better because he's working directly in there but uh, I, I wanted to give you um, an idea of the history that is coming with this roadmap has been written in 2006 where very clever people came out with the idea that we need a joint biobanking activity we need to work together we need to um, combine our efforts the next roadmap which was more um, precise and more facilitated came out in 2008 where i have been already a part of that in 2010 we have already a strategy report on research infrastructures where biobanking was a part of it and in 2016 we have started actually being honest everybody understanding after uh, under the idea of um, a research infrastructure something like CERN in Geneva or something like the um, uh, let's say data collection centers but uh, nobody is understanding that uh, putting together a network of biobanks is much more um, challenging in a different way well it is not a technological not only it's a small technological challenge also but it is also a challenge to put together people and understand that they should talk together so the bbmri eric has somehow managed it to put together so many actually um countries and in each country there are so many biobanks together and it, it functions what i find really fascinating that the iarc uh, feels also as a country <laughs> so uh, 
we are getting bigger and bigger and uh, resources that are in these countries and in these biobanks are actually not only human biological samples like tissue like cells like blood and other body fluids but um, they are also uh, the samples and uh, the data starting from sample related metadata, metadata like um, uh, for instance the, if the patient was um, uh, in, in which state was the patient or if uh, the, the transport was done in a cold, cold chain and uh, and how long the clamping was uh, let's say and so on and sample derived data like if you have already some um, developed uh, analysis that you have out of this sample you can use it several times you don't need to do the same analysis again for another study here is funny thing that this data is only reliable if you have done in a um, at least ISO certified, if not GLP certified environment. Being honest, there are so many mistakes that are happening in lab that everybody wants to do the analysis themselves. But the digital images you can use several times, thousand times, and they are not getting old. Well, um, not yet, maybe sometimes if we have a better technology. So patient related health data is actually standard and you can use it several times. Medical imaging data, um, prescription data, very important. Disease registers, social media, health apps and any, many more. So all this data uh, corresponding to tissue or cell or blood or, or some other fluid is making each sample much more valuable. And then from the, this kind of biobanks, that is a great example from HIV biobank in Fraunhofer uh, Institute in Saarland, uh, uh, which is the best one that I have ever uh, actually seen to make a photo because <laughs> usually the biobanks are in the sailor and you have not enough space to make a photo. Uh, we are somehow moving to the direction of uh, data centers and the data collections because our data is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and we need more structure. So, um, uh, in other hand, we are getting increasing relevance of sample and data quality where actually if you can um, Remember, this is very old. This is coming from 2010, where the, actually in PLOS One Biology, there was a publication about the economics of reproducibility in preclinical research. Actually, what the biobank are, biobanks are doing, we are serving the preclinical research and very few clinical ones. And um, this publication has shown that the mistakes and the quality problems are coming from the sample quality, uh, actually in a very high percentage. Well, in, in other publication is in 2006 and also another publication um, in uh, 2015, we have seen that even more uh, diagnostic process errors are happening because of a sample quality, because of a pre-analytical phase of the uh, actually uh, sample treatment and 5% of US adults experience a diagnostic error and 10% of that diagnostics error are actually related to the quality of the samples and the transport of samples and labeling and so on which is really tragic. In one hand. In another hand, if we look through the FDA in 2018, for instance, companion diagnostics that we have uh, found here we have the drugs, here the disease and the target, 
and which kind of biosamples have been used, you can see that these biosamples are mostly those that are coming from biobanks. And these biosamples should have uh, actually a very clear history because biobanks are more, much more standardized as any clinical research can be at all, because the clinic you cannot standardize. So uh, actually it should be very easy to do, but we have till um, 2000 and let's say 17, no tool to force biobanks to standard design. Uh, and in 2017, it came out the uh, in vitro diagnostic regulation uh, in, in Europe, uh, which with uh, 6.1.1 um, points said that we need to describe the sample from where it is coming, even in diagnostic, which will help to uh, actually solve the problems that I have shown with the diagnostic before. And it will help also uh, biobanks who are using the samples after diagnostics to know how good standard design these samples are. In another hand, uh, they can learn from biobanks because two, before 2017, we have had already the CMTS standards, which we have developed together uh, under the scope of Speedia first and then farther to the ISO with DEAN, uh, which uh, actually can support the diagnostics and to show them how to do it. So if we put all together, we will help the patients, we will help the um, actually the biobanking itself and the researchers, and we will really very highly increase the reproducibility. Not only the reproducibility, but we will also increase the development uh, in, in our surrounding. So in the national innovation systems, how it should look from OECD in 2000, oh no, in 1997, there is a very interesting, uh, um, let's say triangle showing that uh, research education and innovation together are building up on a research infrastructure anyway. Always, if there are three there, you need the infrastructure for that. Where we, 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 we are all actually agree that the biobanks are research infrastructure we, and we can help to educate, to innovate and to research. And there is also a very interesting um, point in Biobanks Need Pharma from 2009, where we have known yeah, already in 2009 that we need pharmaceutical companies use the Biobank samples to become actually to innovate at all. But um, there are so many Biobanks still now that are just don't want to work with. And then we came out with the idea that um, if we are not directly communicating with the industry, which is on my personal, absolutely personal, not the, the university official one opinion, is it's very pity that we are not directly communicating with the industry and directly working. But uh, we came out with an idea of the expert centers, which was actually a PPP model uh, and the white paper from EU, um, how we can, the non-profit uh, part of the biobanks um, combine to the private part, making some ex expert centers, which are actually public um, private partnerships where we can do the research itself, we can uh, provide the, uh, efficient access to samples because it is not a private and we can have here the data expertise, we can here the, um, develop the data and the produce the data and uh, the industry can use this data and so on and so on. And we can avoid the impression of sample com commercialization at all. Well, as uh, to the best of my knowledge, there are not so many 
uh, expert centers yet. And what we have changed here, we have changed here the idea that uh, these expert centers are on their own. And the BBMRI ARI got um, actually a very difficult task to um, have some expert centers in the surrounding, in its own surrounding, where actually from medical data and the knowledge from a common good, let's say from the public, will go in the primary data generation and then to the drugs and diagnostics. And there are already few, um, uh, let's say expert centers or analysis centers uh, in surrounding or BBMRI Eric, but on my opinion, we need much, much more. Well, um, the impact of the BBMRI Eric and BBMRI AT was really very um, interesting on the specific area called Styria, where I am coming from, uh, where the Graz, the city where I'm, I'm living, uh, is the center where we have actually the Biobank Graz implemented and developed directly on site. And the headquarter of BBMRI Austria is also in Graz. And the headquarter of BBMRI Eric is also in Graz, where we have actually, let's say, Holy Triad here <laughs> working together hand by hand. And we have had total investments approximately 1.6 million per year after Biobank Graz uh, have had its infrastructure because infrastructure itself was actually approximately 12 million euros to build up. Um, and then uh, we have had on this basis several grants, international industry funding and so on, some EU projects and industry co collaborations where we got during we were investing 1.6 million together, we got approximately 5 million euro back to the university itself per year. Plus, we have had publications, impact factors, uh, page, uh, patents, uh, skilled people, master students, PhD students, data scientists, improved, improved health service, through the standardization and being honest, our university became in last eight years from the uh, place of 1,600 in Shanghai ranking to in the best 200. And everybody understood that because of facilitation of this kind of research, it, it happened. And this kind of research facilitation came from actually uh, having the infrastructure of Biobank and the labs that we have on site. So the, in the, we have had also a very funny um, publication from the region of Styria in 2017 that all calls of um, uh, in 2017, in all calls of European Commission from Horizon 2020, 5.16% of that money came to Styria. Can you imagine a small Styria having only 1 million population got 5.16% uh, of the whole money that um, the European Commission was providing. And um, what we have also calculated, not we, but the Styrian government has calculated that if we go back and speaking about the investment, this 1.6 million investment for each euro that was invested to the biobank infrastructure, uh, these uh, command centers and uh, surrounding biobanks and uh, biobanking has actually developed 26 euro of economic impact. It's incredible amount, let's say. Well, um, biobank research infrastructures alone cannot develop this kind of impact. 
We understand that to this uh, uh, infrastructure that we have, we need also uh, skilled personnel and research and health innovation ecosystem in the in general, where we have the biobank research infrastructure in the middle, but we are also developing the actually the research based on that because if we have no research the biobanks are only data and biological sample um, which are actually there only for being uh, data garbage and biological garbage if we are not using them in a proper way we need to facilitate the education, and I don't mean only the biobanking education, but I mean the master students, PhD students that based on these biobanks are doing an innovative research. And we need the innovation where the research uh, has done becoming a patent, becoming a, a license, and then used in the health ecosystem. And if we do all this, we need some uh, research and development programs that are doing the support, let's say, to, um, to research and to innovation part to come once back to the system. So we need to open up as much as we can and we need to offer modern possibilities. So I, I hope you know this guy. It's, it, this is the Mr. Spock from the um, Star Trek who said change is the essential process of existence. So if we want to exist farther, we need to uh, change. And for about this change, we have done a survey uh, of biobanks. What do you think? What are actually the critical success factors of biobanks? So it was very easy. We we have done it in during five or uh, weeks. Um, 160 researchers and biobankers actually uh, were part of this. This was voluntary. Was sent to everybody who we know, and from five continents and from 37 countries, we got some answers. And it was very easy. It was only six, six questions. And the first question was um, actually from which country are you coming and what what is your role in biobanking? So we got um, one third almost managers, then project managers. We have had lab technicians who answered our survey, which uh, what made me actually personally happy because usually they are very inert to such kind of research. We have quality managers, risk managers, imagine a person, and then IT and data specialists, uh, education and training specialists. We have had researchers, 32 people who answered and we have some others. Well, um, the question we have asked which type of factors are considered to be essential for sustainability and success in biobanks? Oh, I see I have a misspelling there. I am sorry for that. Uh, well, uh, the most people said it is infrastructure. Because if you have not infrastructure and you see this is more than um, 90%, and they say that it's 95%. They say if we have not the infrastructure for um, uh, sampling and for, for the storage, so um, we cannot be successful. Funny thing that the next several ones are all almost same. What I was very... Um, upset with that quality of samples, people don't think that it's really important. What they think, nevertheless, that is important is the management quality and the personnel, which is both together are actually about the biobanking specific education, which is very important. And well, the people think always that money are important. I would say most women think like this, and maybe this is 50-50. Uh, and that's why we are actually um, 
doing the education and giving the people education uh, uh, possibilities. Uh, but uh, I want to also uh, speak here about the availability of samples and the business model, which is also came out uh, of more than 50% of the questions that the people think that it is important. But if you ask the next question, which business model supports the biobanking most, the, it was incredible that people think that closed biobanks that uh, are communicating to nobody are the most uh, important ones because then I can do my research as I want, which is don't uh, okay. And we have had only a few people who, who said, well, academic biobanks because of the data uh, and uh, data security and uh, public domain, but open to everybody was actually less than 20%, what I want to, to, to emphasize. And the people have written even a specific, um, you know, we have had the possibility to write down um, uh, a note if you want to say something about and there were so many notes that no industry should have an access to the biobanks it's incredible i don't know any single biobank i don't know any single uh university that producing a drug or a diagnostic system this is done usually by a company and this we should understand if we want that our research coming back to that side, we need to communicate, we need to open up. So, on my opinion, not the infrastructure, not the personnel, not the managing quality, but sample quality and cooperation, actually openness, are the success factors for a biobank. Unfortunately, we are not yet there and we need to uh, go towards and what why we are actually giving lectures and trying uh, to build up a new um, managers and new biobankers that are open minded towards cooperation of the with the industry. So we have a basic course how to build a biobank. We have, um, and this basic course is actually, unfortunately, uh, only in the April of uh, coming year. We have actually wanted to do it two times per year. And this year we have managed to do it face to face. Can you imagine? Between two lockdowns, there was a light period but where we have had uh, uh, this course on site and we have had people from the 11 different countries in Graz what was incredible amazing seeing people again let's say and then we have uh, how to operate the biobank uh, sustainably and successful which is five days course where we have about uh, specific lectures on quality management on sample workflow on design of services of a biobank and data management business plan and and, and cost calculation funny thing even the, that such kind of biobanks like qatar biobank that are incredibly well known and well working are uh, invited us to do this uh, course on their side for their people because they see that the idea exchange is very important then uh, we have also a course about the managing multidisciplinary teams and uh, in scientific projects uh, like biobanks because we have realized that in biobanking we have several people involved like um, lab technicians, doctors, engineers, IT specialists, um, chemists, biologists, project managers, uh, um, R&D specialists, uh, patent lawyers, ethics specialists, uh, and so on and so on. And they are also different and they speak although both 
or, or, or all, let's say, German or English, but they speak in different languages. So we have developed a course in which we can bring all people together to work on one target. It's so funny and it's so good to see that it is functioning. We didn't, uh, we haven't been sure and we developed it in, under the scope of a EU project. So this team management uh, is also very nice. Uh, day per day developing that how to um, do a project management, a team management, a communication uh, in science, how to do in the team and research associated skills that we can help uh, to develop. Well, we have also a Master of Science where we have already students from Poland we, who is a STAR student and I am very happy for her about her. So we are, we would be ha really happy to have more of those kind of students if you want to come. This September we will start again. Um, and I want to um, uh, point your attention on a new book that we have um, we are publishing, let's say, uh, uh, biobanks in low and middle income countries, uh, which is uh, together with, uh, meanwhile, 57 different uh, authors from all over, the, all over the world on biobanking. And if you are interested to um, publish together, we are working on a new book on the digitalization of research and uh, from the point of view of biobanking. So give me, um, drop me an email that you are interested to become an author and we will manage it. And as a um, conclusion, I want to say uh, the word Nicola Cuavelli to accommodate our ideas to the time and to the development to keep biobanking successful. That's all from my side. And if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them.